Legend Total War here, and today we're going to be starting a new series on the channel. Uh, based on feedback that you guys provided on the community post that I did a few days ago, uh, this is going to be like a combination of the 20 turn guide plus Let's Plays. So, I don't think that 20 turn guides really work for Warhammer 3 in its current state because the game is going to be constantly changing due to the patches. There's going to be drastic changes to most of the factions, I imagine. Um, so what we can do here is do a non-rigid sort of let's play where I just go over some techniques to begin with and if the game ends up getting patched then it's pretty easy to go in and redo it I suppose later down the track and uh, just update it if need be and also satisfy that desire for some people to watch some actual campaign gameplay uh, which has been lacking on the channel ever since live streams have ended all right so we're going to be starting with Throg because funnily enough this is a faction start that I'm pretty familiar with. I've actually played quite a few Throg campaigns uh, with Warhammer 3, and I really do enjoy playing Throg in Warhammer 3. I think he functions really well. Norsker in general, I think, play really nicely in Warhammer 3. Um, they were terrible in Warhammer 2, but everything that made them bad in Warhammer 2 is gone in Warhammer 3. So CA actually addressed all of their issues that I had with them. Okay, um, that being said as well, if there is a particular faction that you would like to see uh, done next, post a comment in in the uh, comments below and just let me know what you would like me to touch on next anything that you've been having a tough time with just starting because i'm noticing disaster campaigns that are getting sent in while they're not interesting enough to do an actual video on most of them are prior to turn 20 so with this sort of series here um play it for about 45 minutes to an hour get a good start going where you can sort of feel that all right you can sort of gain momentum from there and just show you some reliable techniques without the need to use exploits and cheese. If you want to use exploits and cheese throughout your campaign, totally go for it, I don't really care. Um, I do it in my campaigns in my own time, but in these particular guides here, it's not really much use for me to, to use movement exploits and to totally bug out the AI and swoop them for like three hours, that kind of stuff. Um, just use reliable techniques so you can get a good start. So we're going to start with Throg. We're not going to bother with any endgame crisis stuff in this um, series. We're just going to be focused on getting strong starts. Um, like I said, first 45 minutes to an hour. So hopefully this series here will satisfy people's desire for a bit of a... Like a loose guide um, content, but also provide... Um, uh, I guess a bit of Let's Play. There won't be multiple episodes per faction. I think we can get a good start going within 45 minutes to an hour. You can get the idea whether or not we're... We'll set like a goal for each of these factions. So for Throg here, what we'll do is um, set the goal to capture Cracker Drac within the first 45 minutes to an hour and to totally smash their initial army. I mean, it's all good and well to be able to sneak in and capture it without them being there and then have their army just ravage all the other things. We need to really cripple them. Because if you can take out Cracker Drac really quickly, really aggressively, it sets you up well for the rest of the campaign. Alright, so first thing we have to deal with the Isling. There is a giant in the army. Now a lot of people might look at this and think if there was some way to confederate it and grab that giant, I'd say it's not worth bothering about. Um, because for one thing, the giant is not great against dwarves, they'll just focus fire on it, and giants are still really vulnerable to missiles, even with missile resistance. So, since this army here will get wiped out if we win against it, um, I, I wouldn't bother, like, hitting end turn and waiting for it to, to run around. You really want to be aggressive against Cracker Drac on legendary difficulty, very hard battles, which, I don't know if I showed that, but that's what we're going to be playing all of these on. So if you're not playing on these particular settings, and you use these techniques, well, then you'll obviously find it easier. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that if you're not playing on very hard battles, totally fine, but you will get way more favorable order resolves than what I'll be getting in this. Um, battle difficulty makes a huge difference on your order resolve outcomes. So we've got a Fimio here as well. We've got Diabolical Splendor, which is probably the worst trait we could have asked for. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Fimio don't actually get access to Discipline. Yeah, attach it to your army and come down over here. Now, you can cheese this battle with Throg by um, using a hit and run technique with him, but we don't need to do that, so I'm not going to in this battle here. We'll just try to get a good result. But one thing to keep in mind is that if your army is really badly damaged, it's going to be 
damaged still when you go up against Cracker Drax, so you need to keep that in, in mind. So it's important to try to keep our casualties to a minimum. We don't want any units getting wiped out. It's okay if Throg takes a lot of damage, since you can go into a relatively easy battle at Winter Pyre and actually regenerate there. But you can't do that with like the melee infantry and the trolls. They can't recover their entities just yet. And they can do a little bit of healing, but not much. Okay. Alright, so what I'll do firstly is just show you a little technique with Throg. So I'll just bring these guys up here a bit. I'm going to move them back. Um, I'm going to also... Actually, I'll bring the Norskan Ice Wolves over here. Now, the, um, the Skin Wolves over here are Throg's biggest threat. If we can eliminate them by doing a combination of having them chase after Throg, and then also having the Norskan Ice Wolves uh, pick them apart, uh, that'd be really good. Now, these guys are just going to sit here because we're the attacker. Until we do some ranged or magic damage to them. We can't do any ranged damage. We can do um, Melkoth, Mystify, Miasma. That'll force them to charge at us. But what we want to do here is isolate those skin walls. Um, because they're fast, but they're also damage dealers. Whereas these ones here are fast, but they're not really heavy damage. Uh, also, you if you're playing a very hard battle difficulty, you can't get... Okay, good. He's chasing after us. We just want to get them away from the rest of their army so they can't reinforce. So we're just going to... Take a little bit of damage here, but we're just baiting them away. Um, what I was trying to say was uh, Throg can't waste the ammunition of the Marauder Horsemen. They won't shoot at him on very hard battle difficulty. Throg is actually considered too small to shoot, even though he's a large entity. Okay, turn around, start attacking that. These ones come in from the rear. Throg's anti large as well. Take a few casualties here, but we're trading off really well against the uh, the Skin Wolves. Now, what we could have done here with the Norskan Ice Wolves is maybe waited a little bit before charging in. Let Throg do a bit more damage, that way these guys here don't take as much, but Throg then would have taken more damage. But the great thing here is that when these guys route, the uh, Norskan Ice Wolves will easily be able to run them all down completely. Destroy their world! Onwards! So we've traded off extremely well there. We've essentially taken out their most dangerous unit. I know some people will be like, but well, what about the giant? Giants are like a strong unit, but it's not their most dangerous. Also, remember to run down every last unit that you can, or else you won't get the experience for them, even though they get wiped out after the battle. Of course, if you're playing on normal battle difficulty, you probably just order resolve it, in which case, do you really even need this guide? But whatever. Okay, so... Now that we've done that, I can show you a technique with Throg, if you want to do this. I'm not going to use it excessively in this battle here, but there is, um... Uh, Throg is kind of able to do a really good hit and run technique. I'll just show it on this Marauder here. If you move out of the way... Okay. Unless he does that particular animation. He can do a really good hit and run maneuver. Don't do it on Giants though, because Giants will bloody hit back really hard. But you can do it on, on um, like their lords. I'm just trying to show the technique first. He charges up, and then... Oh, I didn't do it right there. When you give him a move order, he still does the attack. But if you can angle it correctly... Okay, we've got this giant coming after us. I'll, do, I'll go do it on the, uh, the lord. This is really good when you've got Throg some extra speed. Can get a banner of swiftness is really helpful. There we go, did it. Where they don't get a hit off on us, and we got a pretty massive hit. This is, can be really useful for um, for Lord sniping. Doesn't always hit, but that way you get access to the charge bonus. Oh, that giant is pretty damn close. Come on, Throg, move it. He is significantly faster than the giant, but he's also a little bit tired. Okay. Just wanted to show that technique. I'm not going to use it excessively, but we got, you know, a free hit on that lord there. But yeah, that giant is a little bit of a concern. You can do it to him, but there's a good chance that the giant will hit back. If the, um, 
if the Marauder Horsemen chase after us, it's not that big of a deal. Now, as for this unit here, I don't want to use it again for the battle, because otherwise it's going to end up being um, too badly damaged and basically be near death. Now, what we want to do is get them to start coming at us um, by using Melkoth, Mystifying Miasma. By taking out the Skin Wolves first, we've generated some Winds of Magic. Okay, I'm going to do it to the Giant, see if I can get away with doing a hit and run. If you can catch them when they're turned around, that would be best. Nah. Try again. Yep, got him. Do it again. Yeah, just gotta hope don't get that animation, because yeah, the giant hits pretty hard. Frog's got regen, so getting one or two hits in is not that big of a deal. Because that's one advantage Throg has over the giant. He'll regenerate where the uh, giant won't. you got to hope not to get that particular animation where he jumps. you got like a 1 in 3 chance he'll do it. But if you do this, it's a little bit cheesy. <laughs> but you can, you can really do some serious damage cycle charging Throg. And this works against Dwarf Lords really well. Oh, what the hell? Get up! Get him out of there. Okay, they're getting a bit sick of this bullshit, but we took out about... Well, maybe a little bit under a third of that one's health. Okay, the missile unit was shooting at Throg a little bit, but they'll do that when they go into melee. Alright, now let's use Melkov Mystifying Miasma and get them to start coming at us. And let's get Throg back over here. Now, I want to try to get as many of these Melkoths in as possible while we're running back. The Fimir is fast enough to be able to outrun everything except for the Marauder Horsemen, but they're, typically speaking, not going to pin us down. We could also use Copious Vomit. Just got to be careful about the giant. Okay, the giant's coming ahead of him, so could do that technique a little bit more. Using Throg to take out the giant would be really good. But yeah, you don't want to be in a straight-up duel with it because the giant has really high melee attack and dishes out more general sort of damage than Throg does and has more health. Later on the campaign, Throg will easily be able to duel with any old giant, but right now, hitting and running works really nicely. Down about half health now. Okay, this one's coming after that. Just move to the back there. We don't want it chasing us. So yeah, the whole point of this, if you want to put in the time, it's like not that much time, but if you get a bit of practice on it, um, you can really get some good results hitting and running frog, especially if you're ever outpowered, which will happen every now and again. But yeah, that giant is now significantly weaker. Okay, Melkoth Mystifying Miasma is pretty good against cavalry if you can get within range of it, but obviously them being a bit quicker. Alright, have them shoot at trolls, because we've got physical resistance with them, and also we can regenerate a little bit. But I can't catch this. Just, what you want to do is cycle the trolls out between volleys. Doesn't have a whole lot of ammo, I can't possibly catch it. I can try. Oh, oh, we actually lost one. Oh, I actually did catch him. How about that? It's okay to take a couple of casualties. Just don't want to take a lot. This guy hanging back over here. Just use these ones for running down enemy units. That's it now. Unless, of course, you manage to beat those skin wolves without taking any casualties by letting Throg take more damage. Okay, let's try to use a copious vomit, which is an okay ability. Problem is, though, you got to stand still and yeah, okay, that's fine. Right. 
I still want Throg to be focusing on the giant. If we can get rid of that without it getting any kills, that'd be great. Yeah, don't want to do that animation, but it'll happen. Frog's still able to regen to full so far. Getting a troll and infantry blob going can be really good for charge, especially when you're uh, outnumbering the enemy. Okay, we're a little bit pinned down here. It's okay, frog's still fine. Maybe I'll go and take out the lord instead. Just use the Norsk and Ice Wolves to run down broken units. Alright, see this one here has taken a fair bit of damage, but the other one hasn't. Let's pull this one out. Because we're in no position to be able to um, replenish it really quickly. Just try not to take excessive damage on any one unit. Throg can just be left in melee against this dude here. Okay, we should be inflicting the army losses soon. Okay, get this guy here away from the giant. And there we go. Now make sure we run down both the giant and the Lord for maximum experience and um, and loot. Because if you don't do it, you won't get the experience for killing them. So Throg isn't going to regenerate to full, but that's okay. He'll regenerate over the end turn. Alright, don't worry about it if a few of them get away. Instead of getting a Pyrrhic victory, we got a decisive victory. Now, there are some pretty egregious movement bugs that you can do in Warhammer 3. I'm very much aware of most of them. Um, I'm not going to do any in these guides, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, some of the movement bugs are just really... Like, you can get across the map in, like, a single turn. And you can recruit lords straight away and get them to move instantly with this as well and maybe i'll show them one day but not not in these guides here because most people i don't think are going to do them all right take the money and then confederate them so i'm sure some people would want to grab the giant but i, I personally wouldn't bother with it Okay. Now, if we stay at the Altar of Spawns, uh, we will be able to um, regenerate fully and still hit Winter Pyre next turn. However, uh, let me see here. Yeah, get rid of that. We don't. We don't need Marauder Hunters. They just get outclassed by um, by dwarves anyway. Uh, and we can't get access to the Marauder's Great Weapons. W two turns is too long. We're not going to be here that long. Um, so get rid of that. Definitely want to upgrade the port. And probably just go with growth on both of these. Getting iron would be really handy. Uh, you could go Root Marcher with him. And yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so we'll replenish to full next turn. Right, now in terms of recruitment, um, there's no point getting spearmen up against wolves, so just get basic marauders. Yeah, okay, and 
start researching that. We didn't get a student, but that's okay. So I'm just thinking, what we could do is actually recruit a lord. Because what you, what you can do, right, you can stand outside the settlement and go into raid stance and actually uh, make a lot of money raiding your own region, right? Because you lose, sorry, you drop the upkeep cost down by 30%. And what we could do is recruit a lord here. Uh, yep. Although, reducing enemy leadership against dwarfs is not that effective unless you do it a lot. But yeah, grab this dude here. And have him actually do the recruiting. And notice that we're still actually making more money than we would have if we just had Throg without this dude here. Now, we're going to be able to use that Lord in a little bit. Norska really benefits from having, like, multiple Lords fighting side by side. Uh, by There's various techniques we can do. So we'll do that, because we're actually going to make more money that way. And we'll be a bit stronger. But there's no reason to put Marauders in Throg's army. It doesn't boost them at all. Okay, we can have a look in Diplomacy, but it's probably nothing that we really want to do. I wouldn't bother getting any agreements with factions that end up dead. So any any faction that is at war with a major faction, um, I would probably avoid doing Diplomacy with. Because it's just going to piss them off and make them declare war on you sooner. Uh, as soon as you meet them, it might even be better to offer to join war against Septic Law just to make them friendly with us. Because Septic Law is basically a dead faction right from the get-go. In terms what? of trade agreement, nobody's going to trade with us at the moment. Because we don't have any tradable goods. And we're just not strong enough to be able to um, get anyone's attention. All right, and then let's move on. Also, another reason for raiding is that you'll generate 10 winds of magic. And since this starting area here has, by default, minus 5 winds of magic... You know, actually generate some instead of losing it. The only real downside to raiding your own region is you lose a little bit of income from it, but if you're not in a port region, you're not losing that much income anyway, and you'll lose a little bit of growth. But Norska grows really quickly, so losing, what, five growth is not that big of a deal. Don't be afraid as Norska to raid your own regions. Okay. Okay, so Throg's got just enough movement to be able to hit Winter Pirate, so does this guy here. Now, if we get the Lord here to do it... Now, nah, just, just do the same thing. As, just get Throg to do it, because whoever's the primary attacker will get most of the experience. What? Tribesmen got it. Speed that up. Transfer him in. Uh yeah, that's a decent banner. Put that on let's see. Bonus versus large is pretty useless. Put that on the great weapons. I was just checking to see if it changed the order resolve much. Okay, so we definitely want to fight this manually. You really don't want to be taking loads of casualties because... I'm expecting to fight Krakadrak's main army in the next turn or so. So if you're badly damaged and if you're lazy in this situation here, you're going to set yourself up really badly for that. Now, this is where we could really use Throg's hit-and-run technique a lot uh, to, like, to great effect, depending on how much you actually want to do it, um, because the missile units won't shoot at him on very high battle difficulty. If you're playing on normal battle difficulty, then obviously just waste their ammo, if you want to do that. But we really want to take minimal casualties. So I find that with trolls, mixing them among melee infantry like that makes them most effective. Until you get to the point where you're just going all trolls, you know, if that is what you want to do. Which is really effective with Throg. So what we do here, since we're kind of vulnerable to all their missile attacks, especially the, um, the blasting charges, if we use Throg, don't bother using the copious vomit just yet, and we do this technique, it's really good against dwarfs because they're just too slow to be able to react to it. 
It is a little bit tedious, so it's up to you how much you want to do it, if at all. But this hit and run allows us to dish out good damage. Without actually receiving any. And we can take out their important units. If there was a lord in the army, this works against dwarfs. Coral is uh, pretty damn dangerous. Even with physical resistance, they could end up doing a lot of damage to the trolls. And it doesn't take that long to basically completely wipe out the unit without it really getting that much damage in on us. And this only gets better as Throg gets faster. So when you go down his melee line and give him the extra speed, and if you can get him a banner of swiftness, you could do this really quickly against dwarfs. So Throg is really a dwarf killer. Just... Largely because the AI just refuses to shoot at him. And then again, even if they did, you just waste his ammo. So in a fairly short amount of time, we can take out a full unit. Now, funnily enough as well, Throg's actually pretty bad at running down infantry units once they're broken. You can also use this to bounce between units. And Throg has enough mass that they just can't possibly pin him down. You just constantly get that charge bonus going in. I don't think they've even landed a single hit on him. Let me have a look. Oh, they've done a little bit. It's just we instantly regenerated it. Yeah, it's up to you how much you want to do it. I'm only going to do it for a little bit longer, and then we're going to start the real battle. But the whole point of this, again, is just to make sure that our army is not damaged for when we go and fight the real army. Because every single casualty that you have during that battle is going to suck. Also, if we don't take much damage, we can stand outside the settlement in raid stance and reduce our upkeep cost. Although Winterpyre is a port settlement, so you will lose out in the income there. But it's only for one turn. Alright, let's start moving up. Actually, just bring the Fimir up. We'll use the magic. Even though dwarfs are pretty resistant to magic. We've got the magic, might as well use it. Also, going into raid stance, once again, providing us with that extra winds of magic really helps. Because if you don't do that, you end up with about 40 or 35 wins of magic by the time you end up fighting Krakadrak's main army. Which... I mean, that's three less Melkoth Mystifying Miasmas. About 800 damage per pop. Okay. Now, while they're running around like this, we should get ready to charge in on them. Because they're not in good formations. They're just messed up. So you can use this as well to just mess up their formations before the charge. But yeah, dwarves are really bad at dealing with Throg. At least the AI, because they just refuse to shoot him. If they had artillery, they just won't shoot him. Now, this situation here, we don't need to run them all down. Because they will automatically be given the max amount of experience just for the win. Because it's a settlement battle. Don't send the Fimir into melee. So really try to keep the miners with blasting charges distracted so they don't use their techniques on us. Don't worry about the melee infantry. We're going really heavily to try to hit their uh, missile units first. Chaos 
Try to avoid their melee infantry where possible. How about this one here? Just get this dwarf already to chase after you. And just don't engage it at all. got the copious vomit as well, but it's way more important, I think, for Throg to keep these pinned down for the time being. So, pretty minimal damage being inflicted here. By them. Any units route, get them to run it down, just so it doesn't come back. Yeah, see, if I send this Marauder to go fight the Dwarf Warrior, it's actually a really poor engagement for us, but the fact that they're distracted by it is really good for us. And we're in good enough shape that we can remain in raid stance now. Don't need to run them all down. So we've set ourselves up well now to fight Krakadrak's main army, because that's the difficult part of this particular campaign. If you want to, you know, go up against them early, you want to. If if you want to do this, you got to go up against them as early as possible. Um. Otherwise, they can out recruit you, because they'll use global recruitment as well as local recruitment. And so they could end up recruiting about seven or eight units every two turns. So the sooner you get on them, the better. And this is also why I need to recruit other lords. Because we need to draw them out of Cracker Track. We don't want to attack them while they're in that fortified position. There's no way we'd be able to beat them. Well, not outright anyway, but I guess you could um, cap, all the, uh, cap the main point. That is possible. I wouldn't rely on it though. Okay, Giant Blade, that's good for Throg. We'll just pop that in him. That way we've got anti-infantry and anti-large, especially good against dwarfs. Okay. Now. Uh, we want to be standing out here in raid stance. Yeah, that saves us lots of money. And have this guy here recruiting. Now we're going to need another Lord. thinking do we need it right now yeah okay so you want to get a third lord um got a lot of different scar type abilities traits here doesn't really make any difference does it okay now what if we put this one here in raid stance do that because in Warhammer 3 we've got a lot less uh, severe supply line penalties, we can totally afford to do that. Alright, uh, with Throg, yeah, getting to Quicksilver is really good, but we're not going to get that in time for the um, the Dwarf battle. Uh, we've got two points here to distribute. Giving Throg extra melee attack or melee defense can definitely be handy. Also giving Hail of Teeth, uh, no, not that, not that one, which one? Yeah, Frostbit, an extra melee attack for the Norse controls would be good. So let's do that. Okay, with this one here, you can either go with another point to Melkoth Mystifying Miasma to make it cheaper, or with Penumbral Pendulum. Now the thing is, if you go with Penumbral Pendulum, it is somewhat armor-piercing, but it is also a very expensive spell. So I'm actually going to put a second point into Melkoth Mystifying Miasma, because I'm not going to rely too heavily on blobs here. But... Either way is fine. It's entirely up to you which way you want to go with it. Okay, at the Monolith of Flesh, you could get this one here, which will generate um, some obsidian. This will make it easier to get trade agreements. And spreading out Chaos Corruption is you know, an added bonus. Um, as for this, put down the growth. 
check diplomacy once again. So we really don't want to go to war with uh, these guys here, at least to begin with. So offer to join war against the Broken Wheel in exchange for a non-aggression pact, and that'll just keep them off your back for a little while, not for very long. Plus we got a little bit of money out of them. Is there anything else we can do? Now, once we've gotten the obsidian, we might be able to trade. That's fine. Okay, and we've done everything that we can here. I know this looks a little bit messy, but there's a reason for it. Okay, let's move on. Now, Crackerjack is just going to be sitting in here recruiting unless we draw them out. This is why we need the extra lords, and I need to recruit them now because we need to move them not on the border of our region, but into the enemy region. You've got to put it in the exact right location to get that army to come at us. Throg will need to be going into ambush stance, which is why we needed a third lord to recruit. So this is where all the preparation has come into play. Whether or not this works. This is where it all matters. Alright, so Throg, ambush stance, right on the edge there. Now, we're not necessarily trying to ambush uh, this guy. Now they recruit another lord there. So what we'll need to do is actually have more than just one unit. One lord, because we don't want this guy here to chase us. We want to try to draw this one out. Sometimes you'll get lucky and this guy won't be here. He'll be somewhere else. Um, yeah, we're just going to make do with it. Then we throw this guy over here. Put him in raid stance. Now, we're not in range to reinforce him. That's because the distance from here to there is more than a full turn's movement. What we're trying to do here is get this army to come over here and attack us. And then get this one. In a green, true savages. Could be good to move more towards um, Plague of the Crow. That's a really good one. Um, but we'll get Root Marcher to begin with. And just get this one to stand here. And recruit. Okay, and then in terms of construction... Uh, you want to upgrade the port settlements first. There's iron over here that you could go for. That is definitely useful. Let me just see if we get some trade agreements from this. Lover, Not yet. I already know what you Darkling Getting some iron would definitely help with that. But then again, upgrading the ports is worth so much money. Yeah, get that iron going. Upgrade the port next turn. Okay. And let's move on. So if all goes well, this one will come out over here, attack us. And then not pursue us, just push us back a little bit. But he won't be able to get back to Cracker Dragon, that's where Throg gets him. Now, if Throg's not an ambush chance, he won't make the attack. There we go. Do you see what we're going up against? We got here as quickly as we possibly could have. Actually, not entirely true. It is possible to get here a turn earlier, but you got to use the movement bug. Okay, cool. Just move back. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that, but that's actually not so bad. Okay, well, the ambush failed, but we have an opportunity here to attack. This is good. We should take this. You could auto-resolve it if you really want, but, you know, your army will get pretty badly wrecked. I really wasn't expecting that to happen. So this is an added bonus. Um, but this is good, because this way we get some replenishment over the end turn. Okay, so... We're the attacker in the scenario here. Yep. Okay, let's do it. Now, we're a little bit outnumbered. Just by a little bit. So if you're not comfortable with this, you can definitely fight it manually. Ah, sorry, order resolve it. Um, but that will leave you in poor shape to fight the settlement of Krakadrak. And 
And now this is where the situation where you really want to make use of Throg's uh, hit and run because it's really handy in this for this particular enemy. Okay, so we're going to stand back here, wait for our reinforcements a little bit. Because, yeah, we are going to be outpowered to begin with. But just send Throg in. They probably won't use the artillery on him. They probably won't even use the guns on him. But what we want to be doing is killing their lord. Okay. Funny thing here is that the Thunderers are ideal for taking out Throg. I can't dodge bullets with this big ass bloody troll, but they just refuse outright to shoot him. Hey Legend, what are you going to do if Squad of Assembly takes away ammo dodging? <laughs> Well, don't dodge ammo anymore. The thing is, this is what I used to do in Three Kingdoms. I just send my heroes to just charge right in, and the missile units just wouldn't shoot them. So yeah, let's snipe this lord before the battle really begins, and maybe try to take out the artillery. Also, if they get into a big blob like this, you can put down the copious bomb vomit, but if you do that, you got to keep in mind that they will, um, they will start marching towards your main army. If you can fight a steep enough hill, you can possibly kick them down the hill and uh, break their necks. But I don't think Throg has enough uh, mass to do that. Speed that up a little bit. They're a bit too concentrated for us to get at this dude right now. Okay, the enemy, uh, sorry, the allied lord has arrived. Our other lord didn't show up, but that's okay. Alright, I'm going to use copious vomit. No, that's not a good location for it. Right, there if we can. Oh, that looked like it did a ton of damage. Yep. Now, that'll probably get them to start charging at us, but that's okay. We can still keep using Throg to harass them. Now, funnily enough, if you're playing on normal battle difficulty here, for one thing, you would have been able to just order resolver, but if you fight it manually, because the guns will actually shoot at you, this technique doesn't work. <laughs> so it's a bit weird what they've done with normal battle difficulty. They've actually made the AI kind of smarter in this one situation here, on lower difficulties, but they also make it so that there's no point fighting it manually. Because if, yeah, if we were normal battle difficulty, this would be an easy order resolve win. Alright, let's bring the female up here as well and start casting spells. They won't shoot at him. Too small. I really want to get at him, but he's too well protected. So we just get whatever units we can. Just keep harassing them until they decide to actually charge. So he's got a really high charge bonus, so really high chance of doing damage, even to a Dwarf Lord front on. I was also very lucky that we got the uh, the giant blade there, though, although it's not essential. This would still work just fine even without it. Yeah, they are starting to advance now. Biggest problem is probably going to be the grudge throwers, so if I can get the wolves into there, that'll be good, but not right now, because never reach it. Ready. 
So yeah, we do a fair bit of damage with Melkoth. Obviously the spell resistance mitigates it a bit. But thanks to the extra winds of magic that we've gained from being in raid stance, we can just cast more spells. No downside to being able to cast more. Okay, they're starting to shoot at us. Move back a little bit. Come on, get him. Okay. Yeah, I possibly could get the Norsk Ice Wolves there. Move the uh, trolls up. They should shoot at that instead. Okay, I'm going to try to get rid of the grudge throwers. If they're shooting at the trolls, it's fine. Use the trees as a bit of cover. But I'm going to need to try to keep the... Um, the, th the thunderers and stuff pinned down while we attack it, because they'll need a few seconds. But yeah, try to be as disruptive as possible to them while they're advancing. Okay, we don't actually want them to be hidden, we just want them to be using the trees as cover. Mm, it's going to be really difficult to get at it. Yeah, if you don't want them advancing, just don't use copious vomit on them. And if you just rush at them, then you get a result no better than auto resolve. So doing this kind of stuff here, waiting for a weak moment, will get you a much better result. Yeah, I could. I, there's no way I was going to be able to get the Norse Ice Wolves there, but Throg is able to do it just fine. And they're not doing any serious damage to us, so that's fine. The problem that we're having here is fighting in the forest is lowering our melee attack, but also I think he's attacking the dwarf warriors instead of the. Uh, instead of the grudge throwers. Being in the forest here, we can't move as quickly. Can't really use it. I gotta get rid of this damn grudge thrower though. This is why we put the trolls out front. Actually, I might be able to get the wolves to actually get him. We we'll go back after this. Because the rest of the army is moving ahead of the grudge throwers. I'll move it to get them from the rear. I'm gonna go back to try to kill them. If I put this one in the forest here, they might forget about it. Bit of vomit on that for a few extra kills. But yeah, we put the trolls out front here, because even if they get hit by the grudge throw, it just doesn't do that much damage to them. Wait for a little bit more distance, and then I'll send the wolves in. Okay, not willing to fight just yet. Plus, they're regenerating the damage being done. Okay, now send the wolves in. Should be able to take that out. But yeah, I didn't want to send in the melee infantry until the grudge throwers have been dealt with completely. Three 
Oh, yeah, back off just a little bit more. Ready to rubbish. Show the masters. God damn us. Let me kill. Okay, good. We got rid of the grudge throwers, which means we can now attack just fine. And they're coming at us really quite disorganized. Come back, come back. Check for the guns. And like I said, using melee infantry mixed in with the trolls, they perform pretty damn well, even against dwarfs. Good, absolutely rolling over them, barely taking any damage. Battle ready. Yeah, you really want to be using that charge bonus against these dwarfs. So keep cycle charging. We don't want the uh, Norskan Ice Wolves to take too much damage because we need them to run down dwarfs afterwards because we don't automatically wipe them out if we win here. Okay, we'll start charging down the hill. Don't worry about shit units like miners. Not a big deal. They will succumb. Almost killed the enemy lord. Alright, that's a dead unit. Almost got rid of him. Although you could let him live so that he's damaged for the next battle. But if you do kill him, you'll get extra experience and loot money, and it's pretty easy for Throg to kill a new lord. It just depends on how well you feel like you've done in the battle. I feel like we're justified in killing this guy, and it'd be fine if they get another one. Yes, lord! He's doing a bit of damage. Right, one more hit, Frog. You can do it. Right. Okay, one more copious vomit coming up. Okay, damage across the infantry is fairly evenly spread out. Get Throg to hit them in the rear here. We might just break some of them. No trolls have died so far, which is good. And there we go. Cool. We probably won't recover all of it over the end turn here, but we've done enough damage to them now that um, this is a good start against Cracker Drag. And obviously run down as much of them as possible. There's no sense in letting them get away. Especially try to focus down on the Chaos missile units. Because that's actually the stuff that does the most damage to us most of the time. Leader of savages. Let me kill. Chaos good. Yeah, he's in melee with this one. Use the spells on that one. Are we going here? Yeah, there's still 30 of them left. And there's a big blob over here. They've still got a fair bit to run. That one there is a dead unit. Nice. Gonna a little bit more. And that's a dead unit. Move over here. See, that extra magic came in handy. Where am 
We should try our best to, rather than dish out damage evenly across all their units, but try to wipe out as many of them as possible because they're going to end their turn in their own territory, so they're going to get replenishment. Won't be very much, but that just means more troops to have to fight. Alright, that should do it. And we ended up getting a decisive victory. Alright, you know what? We might actually replenish in one turn because we're in a port region, which gives us extra replenishment. Oh, they actually made it back to Krakodrak. That's okay. I, I didn't think they'd be able to make it back. Because what I was expecting to happen is for them to just be standing out here. But it is what happened. Now, I don't think we can reach here this turn. Big arm, despoil and ravage. We wounded him. Overrun. Yeah, we can't reach there this turn. But because they've got two lords here, we can maybe draw them out again. And what we do with Throg is put him into um, Raiden camp. Over here. Uh, transfer the units into him. You could try to set up another ambush, but being this close probably won't work. And this guy here... Just stay there and continue recruiting. So this one here is probably going to pick up a few units. I think it's uh, globally recruiting. I think that's actually... How did he get... I... No, I think he's actually damaged. You can see here. He just he didn't actually die, which is weird. Can't make our trolls a bit better. Now we can start working towards... Penumble Pendulum. So if you took a bit of damage in, in that battle there, you can stay in raid camp here to get even more uh, replenishment. However, the magic is uh, decreasing no a fair bit, cause just because of the region here. Norska. I'm wondering if maybe it might have actually been better for us to have not fought him. That way we could have wiped him out. Don't think so. Not sure. But at the same time, we essentially got a, a victory where we got some experience, got an item, and um, we did decrease their army size by a lot. I can probably still draw them out depending on how many units I actually use. Because what we can do as well is send this army, rather than come and reinforce here, is send him down to Lair of the Troll King. Because he just needs a few units, more than seven, because it's dwarves, and you should be fine to just charge in there. And looking at diplomacy, let's have a look. Still nothing. And let's move on here. So yeah, no need to bring him in. What we want to be doing here is attacking the dude outside the settlement. So that it's not a siege. Although sieging the dwarves isn't too bad if you know what you're doing. You can certainly use the trolls to run around the, the siege map and just cap points constantly. Or they'll try to get away. Now this is a situation where order resolve is perfectly acceptable. Because we're going to be replenishing because we're in camp stance. That's not going to take us out of it. And that got rid of him. This one here is still standing outside the settlement. However, um, if I attack him, he'll probably run away now. Unless unless he's actually considered cornered. So if you look at that, yeah, totally fine to auto-resolve if you know you're going to be at full strength next turn. 
Battle time is feeding time. My ice age comes. So we're dealing with 16 units. Throg has 13 units. Crossbones. Mm, there's a decent chance this one here will stand and fight. Maybe if I don't bring this guy in here. And draw out the garrison. Okay. Now at this point here, um, Krakadrak is essentially defeated. So we can totally justify taking excessive amounts of damage. Because I know I'm going to replenish really quickly now. And then what we can do, because we wiped out the garrison, Slaughter is send him to occupy. There's no White need for Throg to do it. Get him to... Um, you, what you could do is blow it up and then ruin dwell it. But since there's um, useful items in here, I wouldn't really worry too much about doing this stuff right away. Overrun the world. Enslave the southerners. And then get Throg into this stance here, which will actually give us more replenishment than um, if we had been sitting inside the settlement. And then start making our way over to Chokdraken. Uh, then this guy over here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Since we no longer need him over over here. In fact, we don't really need this guy anymore either now. What item was this? Oh yeah, that should really go on Throg. What's this? Okay, get rid of him. Save us a little bit of money. Uh, we should be able to make it there because it's taking away 25% of our movement. Yeah, go in this direction here because it'll still take him a few turns to get the military needed to um, be able to beat Lair of the Troll King. But at this point here, it's basically clean up. Now, since we've got more orders, it's totally fine if we want to boost down orders a bit there. Good. Uh, you could also go with replenishment if you really want, but I think we're fine. We don't really need excessive winds of magic. We're probably just going to be able to auto resolve here. Um, and then if you want, you can have this one finish off Krakadrak. It depends on where they recruit their lord. If they recruit a lord here, then you'll need to send Throg over there. Um, otherwise, you won't need to. We could also recruit into Throg's army. Norska is rich enough that it's totally fine in the early stage of the campaign to generate more than one army. Especially if you're going into, um, like, raid stances constantly. Okay, they really don't have peace now, but no, finish them off. So we hit over the hour mark there, but we have basically won. You know, against, um, Cracker Drac. And then it's just a matter of random shit that will be thrown at you as the campaign progresses now. Yeah, as you discover Kislev, they'll pretty much guarantee to declare war on you. Malice Darkblade will declare war on you at some point. Varg will probably declare war on you at some point. So you just got to be ready for all that stuff, as best you can be. Okay, that's good that they recruited here. Because, yeah, you're not going to have long before Varg probably makes their way down here. So, building a defensive building. A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary, though. For while yeah, yeah. the potential rewards the lords are great... So too. Building a defensive building here. At tier 1 won't build a uh, minor city battle, but at tier 2 it will. Um, that'll make it easier to defend. You could also, if you've got enough money, you could recruit a lord there. Um, the army that they'll send at you with Sertha Ek is probably not that severe. Um, but that is something to keep in mind. That's Trying to get good arrival. relations with him could help a little bit. Have not eaten in days. But that helps a little bit. But he'll probably declare war on you, even if you get a uh, non-aggression pact with him. Tribal fury. So that'll give us nine units. With nine units, we should be able to beat uh, Shock Trekken. Should just be able to order resolve this. Yeah, you can blow it up if you want, but I don't really recommend doing that. Um, 
And then, rather than swinging Throg around this way, what you can do is come down here and fight against the Rossman clan. And when this dude here makes his way down, you can beat his ass and um, then just confederate him. But what I often do is right before I fight him, I sell him a bunch of whatever regions that I've captured. And then I just get them back straight away, but I make a lot of money out of uh, selling it to him. But you know, it's a bit cheesy. It's up to you if you want to do that. And then let's just see if we can uh, finish off Lair of the Troll King there. Should be able to handle it with this. Because if we have a look at it... Mm, that's actually a bit iffy. Because Marauders are not great. You, you could sit... Mm, they'll also put another Lord there, won't they? Do we have any Regiment of Renown available? No. Well, it's up to you if you want to send Throg over there to sort that out. Let's just go through the end turn here and just see what the situation arises. Maybe let's make him a bit better now. And if you want, you can have Throg stand out here in raid stance, but you'll get less replenishment. But you'll make more money. So it's up to you. I, I got a bit of money in reserve there, so that's fine. Having a look at diplomacy again. Things are starting to open up now. Not enough to get a trade agreement, though. Up to you if you want to do any of those. I wouldn't uh, get a non-aggression pack with exquisite pain, because Archeon will hate you for it. So they'll definitely recruit a lord at Lair of the Troll King. So just, it's up to you. If you feel confident enough to charge at that with essentially one unit advantage, um, going up against superior units, that's up to you. Or whether or not you want to send Throg over there to guarantee you'll get a win. Another thing that you could do as well is just besiege the settlement to prevent them from recruiting anything. They'll probably sally out against you, which you just back off, and... Um, at least you stop them from recruiting. If you want Throg to go out and do other things, maybe I'll just show you that last little technique before we um, before we wrap up the episode. Because I've done everything that I want to do here. Maybe it took a little bit longer than I would have liked. But if we have a look over here, we probably won't win this in order resolve. Yeah, we won't win that in order resolve, not unless you're playing on lower battle difficulty. I'd say that it's possible to win that, but it's really iffy because Marauders aren't really capable of handling um, Dwarf Warriors, and you've really got to try to pin those Quarrelers down, and that can be difficult to get in there you know, for free, especially considering this guy here is on foot. But what you do there is you just besiege it. it. You could just bring Throg over here. You should be able to, yeah, you can make it in Force March. You could just bring Throg over, or you can start making your way towards Yetzich, which is what I would prefer to do. So march in the stance that we, we get replenishment. And I'll show you this little technique. Because what we do with this... Is when they sally out against us they will cease recruiting, allowing us to come back over here, recruit two more units, before they start recruiting again. And it really just comes down to how confident you feel about it. Up to you if you want to be friends with Throg. I find him, sorry, Throg, Throt. I find that he's a reasonably reliable ally in the early stages of the campaign, and you could really use some friends uh, because a lot of ev everyone else is going to declare war on you at some point in the campaign. Norska is not a faction that is strong in diplomacy, so you know, pick your friends very carefully. And if you go down and fight the Ropsman clan, usually the Ice Court will declare war on you as well. That's usually what's going to happen. Oh, they actually—I wasn't expecting that. Into the fray. I, I thought that they'd sell you out. Well, cool. If you wanted to starve them out, that works as well. But see how we uh, stop them from recruiting. So yeah, we could just starve them out for a turn or two until Order Resolve wins. Or, since they're not actually recruiting, we could back off over to here. However, there's a chance they'll just recruit another Lord. So it's entirely up to you which way you want to go about it. But yeah, that was an unexpected um, boon there. It's costing us a little bit of money to keep it under siege. But this way, Throg is able to do other things. But yeah, that is really iffy to win that. Really, really iffy. I guess what we could have done as well is prepared a little bit better, but maybe have... Um, not brought two additional units over to Krakadrak, but we absolutely needed to make sure that, that victory there happened. Um, but it's entirely up to you how you want to go about it. You could always just 
I dropped the battle difficulty down as well, but whatever. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to post a comment as to which uh, faction you'd like to see next, whether you like this particular format or not. Just give me some feedback so that I can make this an enjoyable experience for you guys. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.